Hey guys, Mike here. So this video is going to be about pouring and finishing a small entry patio slab. Now this isn't going to end up being a broom finish patio, so make sure you hang out for the rest of the video to see how we how we do a broom finish on this thing. But right now I'm going to show you how we pour this. Now I was hired on this job as a sub just to come in and we we got this ready, we framed it up, we got it ready, and to pour and finish. Um, I, I didn't design it or anything, but we were just hired to do the prep work as well as the pouring and finishing. So they got two inches of styrofoam under this thing to help with frost protection. Now this thing's right in front of our main entryway. This building's actually a brewery. So, I mean, big shout out, big shout out to you beer drinkers. Let me know down in the comments, what's your favorite brand of beer? And if you have a favorite brewery, you know where is it what state are you in and where do you like to go most often <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're pouring out the concrete we got 4,000 psi concrete the edges have been thickened there's going to end up being some posts set on these outside edges and they're going to build end up building like a roof over this structure so that's why the edges are so beefy but like i said we're pouring a 4,000 psi there's a matter rebar in there we actually got a uh, fiber mesh in this too and we got air entrainment in it because we go through a lot of freeze and thaw cycles here where we're from so the air entrainment helps protect against the freezing and thaw damage that happens in concrete so we're going to get most of this poured out this is about a 15 by 8 patio slab we set the top of the forms right to grade so we could screed off them so you'll be able to see just what it's like to screed a small patio slab if you're thinking of doing a small slab like this whether it's for anything you know let me know if this is something you think you can do after you get done watching us if not if you need more help with more training then you could always check out my link for the concrete underground down below you know inside there I can help you out with more training but you'll find things similar to this in there so once we get most of the concrete poured out then we got to mag float our edges now I'm mag floating up there I'm matching the floor inside the brewery up by the door and Luke and Darren were magging the outside edges to the top of the form. And we're just going to use that magnesium screed to screed with. Now Darren's going to screed right off top of the form. I'm going to kind of wet screed off my wet pad. And all I'm doing is I'm just making sure I'm scoring on that, that part of the concrete that I mag floated nice and smooth. The screed actually leaves a tiny little line in the in the in the concrete if you score right. You know, you'll be able to tell. You can kind of see it there as I'm going. That's what I'm looking for. As soon as I see that I've scored, then I just keep moving. But that's how you screed off top of a form like that. It's actually pretty easy. One of the easiest forms of screed and concrete is right off the top of something like that. Now we also got a string going around the outside edge of this to make sure those forms stayed nice and straight. We used a laser to set everything right to grade. So once we get down towards the end, we'll, we'll put a little more concrete in there. We don't want to put too much in there and have to shovel a bunch out and leave a big pile for someone else to clean up. So that's why we start just before we get it filled. Though there ain't, I mean, there isn't really too many tools required to pour a slab like this. You can see we got a screed, we got a rake, concrete rake, or a come along. Darren's got a mag float, and then we'll have a bowl float here. And all those tools, again, guys, are down in the description below. If you, you know, if you're thinking of doing something like this and you need those tools, but there isn't too many tools required just to get the slab itself poured. There's the bowl float. That's just going to smooth out the surface push some of that aggregate down just a little bit bring up some of the paste and that'll give us a nice smooth surface to finish that's actually one of the most important jobs of the whole process right there if your slab's going to be finished is you want a nice get get it really nicely bowl floated Well, Luke's going to go over that he's going to hit a couple parts of it both ways you know he'll he'll turn 90 degrees and get some of it and then he'll go back over it another way and that just helps really make the surface quite level now this slab actually slopes away from the building about an inch and a half so if there does get any water on it at least it's not going to run back up under the door 
Darren's coming in behind him and just taking out the little bullfrog mark he leaves when he when he picks it up. So the finishing process is coming right up. Make sure you hang out for that, but that's that's basically how you pour a, a simple patio slab like that. That could be a four inch slab, could be a six inch. This happened to be a four inch slab with 12 inch thick edges. So what Luke's doing here is he's just marking out where we're putting our joint. We're gonna put one joint in the middle of this. And Darren's using like a walk behind joiner for that. Now Luke's measuring off the edge of the form for the other, the other end of the joint. Make sure we get it nice and straight. And then Darren's just gonna use the screed as a guide as he pulls, pushes and pulls that joiner back and forth. There's multiple ways you can put joints in concrete. This is just one of them. You know, this happens to be the one we use the most when we do hand joints. And this basically is just to get the joint started, get it cut in. You can get it cut in pretty green with this type of joiner. And then if you're going to leave a nice finished edge when you go joint after you broom, then you can you can do that part by hand if you want. But that's about as easy as it is to cut a joint in concrete right there. Now Luke's just putting the first initial cut with the edger. There's all kinds of different size edgers too, guys. That, and there's even walk behind edgers. You know, I mean, we just we use a hand one. It's just the one we've always used. Now I'm using what's called a funny float, and I'm just kind of mag floating the surface out for the first time, closing the surface up a little bit, taking out the bow float lines, kind of just getting it ready for the finish floating process before we broom. What Luke has there is he's got a set of skids and you can get on those skids. They're kind of like snowshoes for concrete. You can get on the skids and, and mag float it out too. What he's doing is he's just taking a rag and wiping any little tiny bit of splatters that we got off the door just to make sure the door stayed nice and clean. You can see how easy it is to use that funny float. That just... That just helps keep you ahead of the game. You know, you want to be prepared for when this stuff starts drying. Now Luke's going to get on it, as you can see, and he's just going to float it out. So this will be the second time we've hit it. Now in Maine, where we have a lot of freeze-thaw cycles, we don't steel trowel our exterior concrete. I don't really recommend you do either if you live in an area of the country where you have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. The steel trowel tends to really seal up the surface in it. Have the, you have the potential for trapping air under there or even moisture and that could scale later on. Using a float, even if you have to do it twice like we are, just you're less apt to trap moisture under there or air. And then when you go to pull the broom over it, that's going to help open up the surface even a little bit more. We never really have trouble with scaling or our surface peeling if we do it this way versus if we would steel trowel it or even use a Fresno. We don't use Fresnos up here either. When you broom like that, you want to pull it back nice and straight without stopping. Just one nice easy motion. There's all kinds of different textures of broom you can use. This is kind of like a medium textured broom. It's pretty much just nylon. It, it can leave a nice, nice fine finish. If we would have waited another 15, 20 minutes, we could have even mag floated this a third time and the, and the finish would have been really, really fine. But they wanted a little bit of texture to this. So the way, the way we're doing it right now is just perfect for the way they want it. And then, you know, Darren's just going to put a finished edge on it. We're not going to put a finished groove mark on it. We're going to leave the groove mark the way it is. And that'll be how we finish this slab. So let me know down in the comments, guys, if you like this kind of stuff. If uh, you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Again, check out the Concrete Underground if you're looking to increase your skill level, finishing concrete, pouring and finishing concrete. I'll see you in there. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.